Welcome to this special coverage of the Episcopal ordination of Bishop Larry J. Kulik, 6th Bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg. On behalf of the staff of the Catholic Accent, we thank you for joining us today for this much anticipated event. I'm Jennifer Mealy, Chief Communications Officer and Managing Director of Evangelization. We will have viewers tuning in to this live stream all over the Diocese of Greensburg, Armstrong, Fayette, Indiana, and Westmoreland counties, in our Catholic schools, Catholic colleges, parishes, and Catholic organizations. But there's no doubt today's stream will reach far beyond the Diocese of Greensburg. Bishop Kulik's Western PA roots and Slovak connections make today's stream a must-watch for friends, family, and the faithful around the world. Bishop-elect Larry Kulik is a Western PA native, born and raised in Leechburg, where he was a parishioner of the former St. Martha Parish. He graduated from St. Joseph High School in Natrona Heights and went on to St. Vincent College for a bachelor's and two master's degrees. He was ordained to the priesthood on May 16, 1992, and went on to earn a canon law degree from the Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C. Bishop-elect Kulik served at parishes in Greensburg, Irwin, Kent, New Kensington, and New Alexandria over the past 18 years, not to mention serving in several diocesan assignments, including Vicar General and Moderator of the Curia under two previous bishops. On Friday, December 18, 2020, the Holy Father Pope Francis named him Bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg. My yes was predicated on my love of the diocese my being here at home in Western Pennsylvania. And what a blessing it is for me and an honor to be able to serve the diocese that is my home, the diocese where I was raised, the diocese where I first heard the call to priesthood, the diocese where I received all of my sacraments, the diocese I was ordained for, the diocese that I've served for the last 28 years. Um, I don't underestimate um, the blessing of that and the awesome responsibility that comes with that. There's no doubt he's a roll up your sleeves and get to work priest. In fact, at 54 years old, he's known by many to be a strategic thinker and energetic leader, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, helping to develop safety protocols to return to in-person worship and enable volunteerism at our parishes so they can support their faith communities. All 78 parishes donated items or facilitated financial assistance for those in need during the pandemic. $250,000 of assistance was distributed by parishes in the four counties of the Diocese of Greensburg and another $200,000 in COVID-19 relief dollars via Catholic Charities. To date, more than 15,000 people were helped by the good folks of the Diocese of Greensburg. We have a lot of work to do, but I'm not fearful about that work. I'm confident. But what I need is your help, and together we all need to work together to continue to build up the church. If I were to say two focuses that I don't think anyone would disagree, it's got to be catechesis and evangelization. No, we have to know the faith, we have to proclaim the faith, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to proclaim that faith with our entire being. I ask for your help, I ask you to join us, and together, together, let us move down the road just make the Diocese of Greensburg even stronger in the faith of Jesus Christ. Bishop-elect Kulik is a classic car enthusiast. As pastor of St. James Parish in New Alexandria, then Monsignor Kulik often proudly talked about his lifelong love of one manufacturer, Pontiac. St. James, like many parishes throughout the diocese, uh, has an annual car show. We've been doing it now for seven years. And it really is a, a great opportunity for people to come, to spend some time together. And we're very proud because even in the context of our parish, while we're all enjoying the cars, uh, it also is a great opportunity for us to share our faith and a great moment to evangelize. Bishop Alek Kulik is active in many Slovak cultural and fraternal organizations locally and nationally, and he also hosts the annual traditional Christmas Eve Slovak dinner in Greensburg. On the table, colorful oplaki or Christmas wafers with honey and garlic. So the oplaki is both a Christmas offering, like the Eucharist is an offering in the unleavened bread, but it also reminds us of our passage from sin to the life of grace. The garlic on the table was always taken first, and it reminds you of the bitter herbs. And the garlic is to symbolize sin, and the world before Christ that was a world of sin. 
Bishop Alek Kulik has embraced technology to enhance connectivity, but he's also built many personal connections with his faith community. God gives us a recipe for life. We find that recipe in the century-old teachings of the church. Christ gives us the recipe not only for a successful life on earth, but he gives us the recipe for eternal life. People will say, well, I'd like to tweak the recipe. I like to use the analogy, it's like baking the cake. Uh, we're gonna follow our own recipe, so we do. We put the cake in the oven, pull the cake out, and we look, and the cake is flat or it's burnt. And what do we do? We throw our hands up and we say, God, why did you do this to me? And maybe God quietly says, I didn't do it to you. I gave you the recipe. Just follow the recipe and you'll get a good cake. I'm Mary Siemens, a multimedia journalist for The Catholic Accent, and I went on assignment with Bishop Kulik to his hometown of Leechburg to visit some special places and people who helped to form him. We have the program from whenever you were ordained, and we also have the program from the very next day when you came back home here to Leechburg. Ms. Oh, my goodness archives. gracious. <laughs> well, this is quite, we're here in uh, what's referred to as the church room of the Leechburg Museum, and uh, we're surrounded by a lot of different memorabilia from all of the many different churches and congregations here in the Leechburg area. And uh, we were just looking at some things from my old former parish, St. Martha's, even a, a marriage certificate from the parish. So it's amazing to think that uh, my uh, programs are here. It's, I'm quite honored. But you know, I often say growing up in Leechburg, we had so many people from so many different uh, backgrounds and different religious beliefs. I think with all the great diversity in Leechburg, there was such a unity within that diversity and a respect for each other's faith and their traditions and their cultures. So I know that was always something that was impressed upon me, not only in my early days, but growing up in Leechburg. Oh my, look, that's seventh grade. Who is that little boy? I don't know who that is. I, I completely, I completely, uh, I have no idea. <laughs> Vest and shirt buttoned. Very nice. Oh my goodness. I know what this one is. You know what this one 58, is? 58, 1958. My mom and dad were classmates. Classmates. Back in the That's day. That's when they met. There he is. Oh, my one nephew looks so much like him now. Yeah. Lisa's there. boy. Oh my. And then, there she is. Oh, look at my mother. Oh my goodness. There's gracious. your mama. Unbelievable. My mother was born on Harrison Avenue. She was one of the last born at home. So she was born on Harrison Avenue. She's never left Harrison Avenue. She was 81 in November. So we call her the Queen of Harrison Avenue. <laughs> One of the things that's always been a joy is uh, Leechburg has what is referred to as a Hall of Fame. And uh, it's usually sponsored by, I think, the Leechburg Business and Professional Association. Yes. And of course, you're in here <laughs> with all these people because you inducted them, each one of them I, into been, the Hall of I've Fame. been very honored. I think I've emceed, had the pleasure and honor of emceeing every Hall of Fame. I think except one, I was actually in Europe when uh, when one of them was going on. But, oh my goodness, I'm going back and looking uh, through the years and all of the people that were really um, influential people in the community. A couple of things that always impress me as you look back and one is the World War II generation you were surrounded with right them here. in Leechburg you were surrounded and we in the cemetery when you go to the cemetery just the, the sea of flags of that World War II generation that really that great generation that worked hard and uh, provided for their families gave their children wonderful educations but really built up the community I, I, I look back and I think sometimes you don't realize the influence of those people and the neighbors and the stories they would tell of sacrifice and personal difficulties, but how they overcame it. I'm here today at the grave of my great-grandparents, John and Anna Kulik. Uh, they immigrated to the United States from Nova Bistrica, which is northwestern Slovakia, and they came to this region like so many at that time, the turn of the 20th century, and uh, my great-grandfather, like my grandparents, uh, found work here in western Pennsylvania, like so many of the immigrants, uh, he in the coal mine and many others in the steel mill. As I come here often, and uh, visit so many of the graves of people who were so influential in my life. Uh, I always find a closeness of the importance of the communion of the saints and the importance of us praying for them and their intercession for each of us. And uh, I was saying a little earlier today, one of the great influences in my life from a faith point of view was the larger community, the faith community. When I walk through the cemetery here at St. Catharines, I often smile that I have 
more people than I know in the cemetery now than I do living in town. But um, here at the grave of uh, Mr. and Mrs. Kroll, they were great, great daily mass attenders at my home parish. And I always tell the interesting story that altar serving played a large role in my priestly vocation and discernment. And uh, I loved the idea of serving. And I went to our pastor <clears throat> prior to receiving First Holy Communion. And I said to him that I'd like to be an altar server. And he said to me, he said, well, you have to first receive your First Holy Communion. You can't be an altar server if you haven't received your First Holy Communion. So I said, okay. So that was in my mind. And I received my First Holy Communion the last sat Sunday of May in 1974. And I remember it very clearly. And after school that next Monday, the day after, I remember walking over to the rectory and I knocked on the door and I, the housekeeper answered the door and she said, may I help you, Larry? And I said, yes, I wanna see father. And she got a little smile on her face and she said, well, wait right here, I'll get him. So he came to the door and I said, father, you said that uh, I had to receive my first Holy Communion to be able to be an altar server. And I received my first Holy Communion yesterday, so I'd like to serve. And uh, he got just a little smile on his face and he said, well, I did tell you that, didn't I? And um, the story always goes that he talked to my mother. And uh, in those days, I always laughed. We didn't have altar server training and all of this. So father just said, you come to daily mass for the next two weeks every day and I'll train you. And later on, I found out that him and my mother had sort of thought I was young, but father didn't want to crush my desire, but they thought I wouldn't have the perseverance to last for two weeks early in the morning every day, but I did. And I tell that story here at the grave of Mr. and Mrs. Kroll because the first day I came into church to be ready to serve, Mr. Kroll was the only person in church. It was early in the morning. And I came into the main body of the church and he was there praying as he would always early before mass. And I said, Mr. Kroll, I said, I need to know where the sacristy is. And he looked up and he smiled. He says, why do you need to know where the sacristy is? I said, because I'm being trained to be an altar server. And he smiled and he said, I'll take you back to the sacristy. So he took me back and showed me where the sacristy was and uh, all kinds of great memories. But uh, here, I, when I saw his grave, I had to stop and it was a great memory of him in my first day of altar serving in 1974. I'm here at the crypt in the gravesite of Father Rudolf Helvonic. Father Helvonic uh, was the pastor at St. Martha's uh, for many years from 1970 until 1987. So for 17 years of my early formative life, Father Helvonic was our pastor. I began to serve under him. Uh, I uh, received my, many of my sacraments under him and certainly uh, discerned a larger part of my vocation. Uh, under his guidance. Uh, he was an immigrant from Slovakia. He came over uh, again from Nova Bistrica, Slovakia uh, when he was just a young child, uh, but spoke uh, fluent Slovak, but was also um, uh, a very disciplined man. And uh, he was someone who certainly set an example of being very disciplined and also having a great love for the church and the priesthood. And uh, I think back and have many, many happy memories, especially of serving uh, with him. Uh, one of my favorite stories is the first day as I was getting ready to go out and serve, Father uh, made sure that I had a cassock and a surplus that fit. And he simply said to me, he says, go out. And he said, just watch me. And he said, follow what I do and I'll tell you what also to do. And so Father went out, we both went out, we went out to the altar, we both genuflected. Father turned to the altar, so I turned to the altar. Father bent down and kissed the top of the altar. I bent down and kissed the top of the altar. And he turned to me and he said, you don't need to do that. <laughs> uh, I conveyed that story at my first mass when he was present in one of the principal con celebrants. And he remembered that and got a chuckle out of that. And every now and then as I'm kissing the altar still to this day, I think of my first kiss of the altar wasn't uh, on the day of my first mass, uh, but was my first day of altar serving. As, as I look back on my life and even my vocational discernment, I have to say that St. Joseph High School was a very integral part of not only my discernment and priesthood, but really was a supportive environment for my growing in the faith, loving the faith, and loving the church. I mean, you're constantly being tweeted, you're constantly being texted, you're constantly getting voicemail, you're constantly getting Facebook message, you know, you're, you're, and I find that a lot of young people are saying they're finding a whole new renewal 
and Eucharistic adoration because it's culturally something so different of spending just quiet time in the presence of Christ in the Eucharist. So I would really encourage fostering a good prayer life, teaching a good prayer life, teaching good habits of the prayer life, and immersing people in that prayer life, which is both liturgical, devotional, and private, so that one has a whole retinue of prayer. Because if, if we don't have a strong prayer life, we, we won't make it, and our faith will, will dry up. May the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go down upon you and remain forever with you. Amen. I'm Jordan Wyko, Multimedia Content Manager for The Catholic Accent, and I've had the pleasure of working with Bishop Kulik for the last several years. Not only is Bishop Kulik a St. Joseph High School graduate, but he earned a bachelor's degree in philosophy from St. Vincent College in 1988. He attended St. Vincent Seminary where he received a master's degree in systematic theology in 1991 and a Master of Divinity degree in 1992. Here's a message from a St. Vincent College classmate who is now president of St. Vincent College. Hello, Bishop. From all of us at St. Vincent, we want to offer you a, a big congratulations. You know, it was about 30 years ago when you and I sat in these very classrooms at St. Vincent Seminary. And I remember the dedication and the rigor with which you approached your studies. And it's obvious that you've continued that discipline and that rigor and dedication throughout your career. And we know that as you take on the role of chief, chief shepherd of our diocese, you will continue with that same dedication. We are proud that a double bear cat from our college and seminary sits now at the Diocese of Greensburg in the role of Bishop. We are proud of you, Bishop, and we look forward to continuing to work with you and to help you in building up the kingdom of God in the church, particularly in this church of Greensburg. God bless you, be assured of our prayers, and again, congratulations. Hello, I'm Father Killian Locke, the Director of Campus Ministry at St. Vincent College. And Bishop Kulig, I was excited when I heard the announcement that you would be the next Bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg. And the excitement came from my already being familiar with you and experiencing your leadership, your holiness, the integrity that, that you bring to the priesthood and that you brought to the diocese. And these are qualities that certainly will make you a good shepherd for the Diocese of Greensburg, as well as for those of us at St. Vincent College. And hello, Bishop Kulik. My name is Brother Barnabas O'Reilly. Um, I'm the Assistant Director here of Campus Ministry. And uh, I graduated from the college back in 2012. And uh, I can't tell you how influential it was for me to get involved in my faith in college. Um, so I'm excited to have you come here to St. Vincent to spend some time with our students and uh, to encourage them to grow in their faith. Uh, you know, really recognizing you as that universal connection to the whole church that our students will have um, with you as bishop during the, this crucial time in their lives. Um, praying for you and wishing you the best as you transition into being the bishop, especially during this time and this uh, point of the history of the world in the Greensburg Diocese. So I just wanted to officially welcome you uh, from here at St. Vincent College and our St. Vincent Campus Ministry. We are so excited here at St. Vincent College for you to take on this new role as our shepherd. I'm a junior here at the college, majoring in English and Studio Art. I'm also very active in campus ministry. Before COVID, I was a Eucharistic minister in our student chapel, as well as coordinate the groups at large for our college. We look forward to having you join us for different events and presiding at masses in the future here. We wish you best of luck as you begin this new journey. Please know that you are in our thoughts and prayers. Bishop Kulik loved being a parish priest, and the parishioners of St. James in New Alexandria loved him as their pastor. Their drive-by goodbye was on January 31st. Our parishioners in France love Bishop Elar Coley, and everyone was enthused about it because we could not have a celebration, so to speak. And I've seen other drive-bys. He's just been a joy, joy to work with. He, he married Jen and I years ago. He was the priest at our wedding before he was Monsignor. 
Oh, he's been in our life forever. He's been in our life since he was ordained. So we've known him for a long time. He's a dear friend. I knew he was going to be a, a bishop at one time, but never thought he would be here at the Diocese of Greensboro. And just how wonderful that is for us, that he is now our shepherd. Bishop Kulik's personal connections in the community run deep, especially his Slovak roots. Each year, with the exception of 2020, because of gathering restrictions, he hosted the traditional Slovak Christmas Eve dinner in Greensburg. A dance troupe called the Pittsburgh Slovakians take great pride in their performance about the birth of Christ. The dancers span generations and their camaraderie is moving. When you become a member, you're a member for life. Even you, <clears throat> if you go to school, you come back, you're one of us. Their annual performance in Greensburg is always preceded by a traditional Slovak Christmas Eve meal organized by the First Catholic Slovak Union. One of the great customs is the evening meal usually starts with, if not the youngest, uh, one of the youngest children uh, looking for and finding the star of Christmas Eve. And the appearance of the star is always a sign uh, that the meal can begin and that the evening has come upon us. Tonight we're very happy to have with us uh, John Yakubushin. John is age five, and he is a member of Branch 199 of the First Catholic Slovak Union. See, John, if you can see the star. What do you think, John? Is it good? We got it? Okay. On the table, colorful oplaki, or Christmas wafers with honey and garlic. So the Oplecki is both a Christmas offering, like the Eucharist is an offering in the Unleavened Bread, but it also reminds us of our passage from sin to the life of grace. The garlic on the table was always taken first, and it reminds you of the bitter herbs. And the garlic is to symbolize sin, and the world before Christ that was a world with sin. Guests dip the oplaki into the honey and allow the sweetness to overcome the bitter taste of garlic, just as Christ overcame sin and death. The next course is mushroom soup, which symbolizes prosperity because mushrooms grow without being planted. It's beyond my expectations, actually. I didn't know what to expect, but uh, it's suddenly, you know, in this rush and, uh, and stress and, and the responsibilities that you have, suddenly there's this moment of calming down and realizing how important moment is coming in several weeks. The Slovak Christmas traditions are especially meaningful to many who remember a time when they couldn't practice their Catholic faith in Slovakia. That all changed after the fall of communism in 1989. There are a lot of young people who are uh, reinventing themselves, uh, who are um, finding a strong belief inside this still more and more secular world. The Most Reverend U.L. Lamb was installed as the first bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg January 16, 1952, and served until 1959. Bishop Lamb brought a vision for schools, hospitals, and institutions to care for the elderly during his tenure. He was instrumental in the founding of the former Jeanette District Memorial Hospital, which opened in 1959. Also during his time as bishop, eight new schools were created, including Greensburg Central Catholic High School, which was dedicated November 29, 1959, just 10 days before Bishop Lamb's death on December 8th. The Most Reverend William G. Kinnair was consecrated and installed as the second bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg on May 4, 1960, and served until 1987. Bishop Kinnair had the longest tenure of all of the bishops of the diocese, serving as its spiritual leader for 27 years. He directed the diocese through the changes of the Second Vatican Council and into the latter part of the 1980s. 
Bishop Kinnear also oversaw a long period of church growth, as well as the continued growth of education, which included the dedication of Geibel Catholic High School. He died June 12, 1995. The Most Reverend Anthony G. Bosco was installed as the third bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg on June 30, 1987, serving until his retirement on January 2, 2004. Bishop Bosco's leadership was marked by his commitment to Vatican II's call to the laity, changes in religious education and formation, and the promotion of collaboration among parishes. He also launched a capital campaign on September 21, 2000, that raised more than $28 million for the diocese and its parishes. Bishop Bosco died July 2, 2013. The Most Reverend Lawrence E. Brandt was installed as the fourth bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg on March 4, 2004, serving until his retirement on April 24, 2015. Early in his term, Bishop Brandt established vocation prayer chapels to help raise awareness for an increase in vocations. He also instituted a full-time office for clergy vocations and an office for the permanent diaconate. Bishop Brandt's early call to vocations proved successful. He ordained the diocese's first two permanent deacons in 2009 and four more in 2015. In 2010, he invited the first two Filipino priests to serve in the diocese and also ordained eight men to the priesthood during his tenure. Bishop Brandt launched the diocese's second capital campaign, which raised more than $55 million in gifts and pledges to support parishes and the diocese, and he directed a restoration of Blessed Sacrament Cathedral. Bishop Brandt also established the Diocesan Poverty Relief Fund in 2010. All money contributed to this fund goes directly to the aid of the poor and needy of the diocese. Bishop Brandt submitted his retirement to Pope Francis on his 75th birthday. Bishop Brandt sends this message to Bishop Kolick. I certainly welcome this opportunity to offer my heartfelt congratulations to Bishop Kulik as he assumes his responsibilities and engages the, the responsibilities of being our sixth Bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg. It has been my privilege, really, to have worked closely with Bishop Kulik uh, in my term, in my uh, tenure as the fourth bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg. And so since he was, during that time, my Master of Ceremonies, my Vocation Director, the Vicar General of the Diocese, and also the Pastor of St. James, I got to know him well in different roles, watching him function in these different roles, that I began to learn more and more about his gifts, his personality, and also the, all the reasons for the great work he was doing. And so he's been a man of, of relationships. And when, you, when people feel they're part of you through a relationship, then they give you a part of themselves. They reciprocate. And this reciprocation to, to Bishop Kulik and his ministry has been wonderful to behold. And it, such a, it, it, it holds out such a great promise for his success as a bishop. People are going to gift him with a part of themselves because they love him. So Bishop Kulik, I congratulate you as a dear friend, as our sixth bishop, and as a wonderful human being who has so many spiritual and human and intellectual gifts that will serve you and us in the diocese so well for decades and decades to come. Ad multos anos gloriosque anos. Many, many years and many glorious years. The Most Reverend Edward C. Malesic was ordained and installed as the 5th Bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg on July 13, 2015. During his tenure, Bishop Malesic oversaw an initiative to address the opioid epidemic and guided the diocese through the clergy abuse crisis with the establishment of the Safe Environment Advisory Council. 
He actively visited parishes and encouraged the establishment of vocation ministries throughout the diocese. He also directed the formation of the St. Pope John Paul II Tuition Opportunity Partnership, which made $4.1 million in scholarships and tuition assistance available for the diocese's 12 Catholic schools. Bishop Molesnik oversaw the marriage of communication with evangelization and prioritized the use of new media. In fact, his streaming masses during the early parts of the COVID-19 pandemic had an online audience of close to 25,000 devices, reaching an estimated 80,000 people. The diocese anticipated it would be popular as parishioners were determined to stay connected to their faith during the pandemic. Bishop Molesic was installed as the 12th Bishop of the Diocese of Cleveland on September 14, 2020. Here is his message for Bishop Kolick. When I became the Bishop of Greensburg over five years ago, I wondered who would help me understand it all. Where was Trafford? How do I get to Uniontown? Where's the coffee machine in the office? I soon found out that Monsignor Kulik, my Vicar General, would be one of my greatest helpers. And he was close by my side throughout the five years that I was blessed to spend in the Diocese of Greensburg. I am thrilled that he is the person to succeed me and take over the cathedra, the bishop's chair in the cathedral. I warmed it up for you, Bishop. Bishop Kulik, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, was certainly guided by the Holy Spirit in his choice of you. You will be an excellent shepherd for the Diocese of Greensburg. I am happy to call you a friend and honored to be one of the co-consecrators at your Episcopal ordination. It is good to count you now as a brother bishop. I know that you have a deep love of our Lord Jesus, you have a strong call to ordained ministry, and you love the Diocese of Greensburg, its priests, deacons, religious, and lay faithful. You already know your way around, but I also know that everyone is ready to give you a hand when you need it, and they support you. You can count on that from me too. Bishop Kulik, congratulations to you and to the Diocese of Greensburg. God bless you and those you serve, and those you love. In an abundance of caution, and in order to prioritize the health and safety of the faith community, attendance at the Episcopal ordination is limited and by invitation only. Bishop's immediate family is in attendance, including his parents. Other bishops attending the event are Philadelphia Archbishop Nelson Perez, Cleveland Bishop Edward Molesic, Bishop Lawrence Brandt, who is Bishop Emeritus of Greensburg, and Archbishop Christophe Pierre, the Papal Nuncio, which means he is the ambassador of the Holy See to the United States. Bishop Lawrence Persico, a native of the Diocese of Greensburg, was the homilist for last night's evening prayer, which Bishop Kulik asked be shared virtually as well. A small number of diocesan priests are in attendance, including the College of Consultors and Deans, who are priests charged with advising the bishop. I'm Robin Mall, Director of Marketing for the Catholic Accent, here to preview today's Episcopal ordination. Monsignor James Gaston, pastor of Mother of Sars Parish in Murraysville, and Monsignor Michael Bagali, pastor of St. Mary of Chestahova Parish, St. Joseph Parish, and Mount St. Peter Parish, all in New Kensington, will serve as live commentators today, helping those watching virtually to understand each piece of the Episcopal ordination. The primary symbols uh, for an ordination are the calling down of the Holy Spirit on him, the prayer, followed by the anointing with the chrism. The chrism oil is mixed with a perfume and arom has an aromatic sense. The, the fragrance is just delightful. And usually he'll get a good dose of it right on the crown of his head. There are three oils that the bishop uh, consecrates on Holy Thursday, which go out to all the churches throughout uh, of the diocese. There's the uh, oil of catechumens and the oil of chrism and the oil of the sick. And so he's anointed with the oil following the prayer. So those two things really, the rest of the handing on of the insignia follow from that, but the ordination rite is very much connected to the calling down of the Holy Spirit on him for the role and the mission and ministry that's given to him as bishop. Now, I'm not just saying this, I think it is an honor to have one of your own chosen to serve as the bishop of the diocese. 
that that does not always happen it doesn't happen all that often really bishops are transferred or come, taken from other places at times and sent to a new place um, there are pluses and minuses in all of that but having uh, bishop kulik as a local son uh, is i th i think it acknowledges the faith in which he was raised in this local church and now he's being called to preside over this community of faith as its bishop I, you can't underestimate the uh, the affirmation of this local church i'm jerry zufel former editor of the catholic accent a tremendous amount of symbolism is evident in bishop kulik's selection of his coat of arms Here's an interview about each important piece. On the right-hand side is the coat of arms of the Diocese of Greensburg. And that coat of arms is unchanged and has been unchanged since the foundation of the diocese in 1951. The shield itself is on a green background. The crenellated wall gives you the idea of Berg. And then as you look in the center of the crenellated wall is a blue star. That blue star represents and comes from the coat of arms of the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. It is in our coat of arms because our first bishop, Bishop Hugh Lamb, came from the Diocese of Philadelphia. Also above, in the top part of the shield, you'll see two stylized crosses. Those two crosses come from the coat of arms of the Diocese of Pittsburgh. And our diocese, separated from the Diocese of Pittsburgh in 1951, and the Diocese of Greensburg was created. Uh, the Cairo on the bottom is the ancient symbol in the Greek, which means God and man, and is the symbol of Christ. And then the two red crosses, double barred crosses, are symbolic of the missionary crosses. And then the second half of the coat of arms is the personal coat of arms of the bishop. And it's interesting, uh, when a bishop is ordained, uh, a bishop is seen as being married to the diocese. And so the bringing together of the two coats of arms occurs in the heraldic art. And so the personal side of my coat of arms gives deference to my Slovak heritage. Predominantly what you might see is a stylization of the Slovak coat of arms. The red background is not solid red and you have to look very carefully to see it. But at the top of the coat of arms, the red is dark. And then as it goes down, it is lighter. And so the dark red on the top symbolizes blood and the lighter red symbolizes fire. And as many people know, St. Lawrence was martyred by being burned alive slowly on the gridiron. And so the backdrop colors of blood and fire represent the martyrdom of my baptismal patron, Lawrence. But also, it reminds us that in the work of evangelization, we are called to hopefully, figuratively, shed our blood, but also to be on fire for the gospel message. The double barred cross that's the center part of my coat of arms and reflects part of the coat of arms of Slovakia is very fascinating historically. St. Cyril and Methodius were two brothers who were often referred to as the apostles to the Slavic nations. And they moved into the Slavic lands as great missionaries in a time when the Slavic lands were still pagan. Not only did they proclaim the gospel, but they had tremendous success in converting the Slavic lands to Christianity. They planted the double barred cross on the highest point in the mountain to basically consecrate the land to Christ and to show that Christ indeed had been proclaimed and accepted. And the Blue Mountains represent not only uh, the hills of Slovakia, but I also wanted them to represent the hills and the mountains of southwestern Pennsylvania. In addition, my hometown is Leechburg, and the official colors of Leechburg are blue and white. But also, blue in heraldry always represents steel, and my hometown was a major producer of steel for over a century. Blue also represents the Blessed Mother, and so the Blue Mountains also give a nod to our Blessed Mother and the patroness of our diocese. If you notice, there's a shadowing on the top of the hills, and that shadowing is coming because the light or the fire is coming up behind the cross, which is illuminating not only the mountains, but a symbol of how Christ illuminates the world and how our faith gives light to the darkness of the world. 
but the shadows and the highlights of the mountain are also to represent St. Joseph. And I was very blessed to be named a bishop uh, by Pope Francis in the holy year of St. Joseph. The Sisters of St. Joseph had great influence in my hometown of Leechburg, Art the convent of the Sisters of St. Joseph were at my former parish of St. Martha. And then of course I went to St. Joseph High School and had inf was influenced greatly by the Sisters of St. Joseph. And so that image of the two blues coming together symbolized Mary and Joseph together, united. Finally, there are two sheaves of wheat coming up from the two smaller mountains. And those two sheaves of wheat have very interesting uh, imagery. St. Martha was my home parish patron. And so the wheat symbolizes not only St. Martha, her feeding of Christ, but also Christ feeding us. And if you notice in each sheaf of wheat, there are seven strands that represent the seven sacraments of the church. And also, if you notice, the sheaves are bundled together, which means they're harvested. And it reminds us that the work of catechesis and evangelization is a constant organic process. The seed is planted, the plant grows, wheat is harvested. And finally, if you put seven and seven together for all the people who like numbers, you have the 12 apostles, the Blessed Mother, and Christ, the image of the first evangelists, the first apostles, and indeed the foundation of the church. I hope that my motto in the Latin is pretty easily understood, and it's uh, Christus est veritas, which means Christ is the truth. The truth is standing in front of us. It's Jesus Christ. There are many ways to stay connected to your faith. You can text the word faith to the number 724-305-3057 to receive important alerts from the diocese about what will be happening in our faith community in the coming weeks, including streaming masses celebrated by our new bishop for Ash Wednesday at the cathedral. He also plans to visit and stream from local parish communities. During the pandemic, our parishes have continued to be the light for our faith communities. More than 100 new ministries were started to care for those in need, clean our parishes, and stream masses. Nearly a quarter of a million dollars was distributed by our parishes for COVID-19 relief to 15,000 people. God's work can only continue with your help. Prayerfully consider visiting dioceseofgreensburg.org. At the top, under the Giving tab, click on Donate to your parish offertory. There, you can select an amount and designate it to a specific parish. I'm John Zoka, Director of Visual Communications. Bishop Kulik is a classic car enthusiast. This is a story from the Accent on Air in 2019, while he was pastor of St. James Parish in New Alexandria. I'm John Zoka from the Accent On Air, bringing you up to speed on the classic car cruises here at the Diocese of Greensburg. I'm here with Monsignor Kolick, the Vicar General for the Diocese of Greensburg. We're talking about cars today, and this happens to be Monsignor Kolick's car. Well, hi John, it's so good to have you here at St. James Parish. And St. James, like many parishes throughout the diocese, uh, has an annual car show. We've been doing it now for seven years, and it really is a uh, a great opportunity for people to come to spend some time together and we're very proud because even in the context of our parish while we're all enjoying the cars uh, it also is a great opportunity for us to share our faith and a great moment to evangelize so Ron you're a, are you a parishioner here at St. James? Yes. Uh -huh. Have you been coming to the car shows uh, how many years? Every year. Do you get the itch to buy anything when you're here if it's for sale? <laughs> On occasion we do yes. Yeah? Yeah. They don't make cars like this anymore. No they don't. So how fast is this thing going? I see the speedometer's up 120. It'll do that if you have to. Yeah? Ever been caught by the cops in this car? No. No? no. Maybe we should take a ride. <laughs> <laughs> I got bad luck. So I don't know. <laughs> Hope it starts. Hope <laughs> it starts. <laughs> well, you know, John, uh, it's the only thing uh, better than being at a car show is having a chance to ride in the car. That's right. And Mr. Starry is giving us a wonderful uh, ride in this yes, convertible Buick. And uh, you know, car shows are something that really are growing in popularity. And it really is something that cuts across the generations. Young people, middle-aged people, older people. And when parishes have the opportunity to have a host a car show like this, it really gives them an opportunity to get to see the parishes, get to interact with the people. And so it's a really a wonderful opportunity uh, 
to socialize and also uh, many times I know like our parish has a dinner and uh, it's not just a car show but many times there's a lot of activities that people nice. have fun with yeah. in the summertime. Well I know where I'm coming this summer. <laughs> well we're always welcome John. <laughs> Do they give rides? I don't know. You know, Mr. Starry, that might be something we have to think of. Yeah, it makes right. some money. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I'll tell you what, if we had to pay for this ride, I don't know if we could afford it in this car. <laughs> Congratulatory videos from across the diocese have been pouring in. Take a look. Congratulations, Bishop Kula. Congrats, Bishop Kulik. We're so excited for you, and we are praying for you. Congratulations, Bishop Kulik. Our journey together as priests began at St. Vincent Seminary. Your journey has taken you to become our bishop. Again, congratulations. Congratulations, Bishop Kulik. We're so happy for you, and we're praying for you. Having grown up in the Diocese of Greensburg and being a member of the Blessed Sacrament Cathedral Parish, I was very excited to hear the news that you would be the next bishop. I want to take this opportunity to congratulate you and wish you all the best. Thank you, Bishop Kulik. We, the eighth grade class at St. John the Evangelist Regional Catholic School, extend our sincere congratulations as you become the new bishop of the Diocese of Minnesota. We thank you for your service to God and to all of us. Congratulations, Bishop Kulik. From one St. Joseph High School Spartan to another, Congratulations, Bishop Kulik. It has been such a joy to serve with you and see you at our annual Latin Masses, as well as the dedication of the St. John Paul II Center, which you presided over during my freshman year. Speaking of St. John Paul II, I vividly remember reaching out to you and requesting an interview because you have a vast knowledge and appreciation for St. John Paul II. He graciously accepted and helped contribute to my project for History Day, and I'm eternally grateful. May St. John Paul II, St. Joseph, and all the holy men and women watch over you, protect you, and guide you as you continue to lead our diocese. I look forward to working with you in the future of our diocese and thank you for everything that you have done as diocesan administrator. Your hard work and dedication is truly appreciated and does not go unnoticed. God bless you and congratulations again, Bishop Kulik. Congratulations, Bishop Kulik. We're happy to have you at home. Good God, Father of our human family, we thank you for the celebration of our new Bishop, Lawrence Kulik. You, Bishop, accepted the call to be our shepherd, and we know you and have heard and seen you, and we are happy that you are our new Bishop. We are presently sending many prayers to God for you each day. It takes great faith to accept this awesome responsibility for the people of God. You have answered yes to God like Mary, and we are grateful for your faith. Anchored in faith, our church leaders were always able to trust completely in God's promises. As a faith community, GCC has faith as one of our core values. The centurion, our mascot and model, was a person of deep faith. He had the courage at the foot of the cross to look up to Christ and proclaim, Surely this was the Son of God. We pray that your deep Today as a church is seen experiencing a profound renewal of mind, heart, and soul. Being a disciple means being ready to bring good, the love of Christ to others. This we know you will do because you always have brought Christ to others in your priesthood. Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful in a new way. Fill the heart of our new bishop as he spreads the love of Christ to the people of the Diocese of Greensburg. Congratulations, Bishop Kulik. We wish you all the best here in the GCC TV studio on your new journey. St. Joe's plays an integral role in developing faith and work ethic, as both Bishop Kulik and I can attest to. It gives me great pride that a St. Joseph alumnus is being named the Bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg. I'd like to extend my congratulations to Bishop Kulik as he begins his new role. As a member of the diocese, I want to personally offer you my congratulations on becoming the new bishop, and to wish you a happy installation day. I pray that God will continue to guide you as you take on this new and important position and that you will encourage young people like me to grow in our faith. So congratulations again and have a blessed day. Congratulations, Bishop Kulik. We'll be praying for you. Congratulations, Bishop Kulik. Uh, we're praying for you. Congratulations, Bishop Kulik. Bishop Kulik, on behalf of the Bible Catholic, 
faculty, staff, and students, congratulations. We will continue to remember you in our prayers as you shepherd the flock of the Greensburg Diocese. Congratulations. Congratulations, Bishop Kulik. I'm so happy for you and I'll be praying for you. Bishop Kulik, I hope you have a good life learning more about Jesus and teaching us more about Jesus. And I wish you good luck. Congratulations, Bishop Kulik. You are a very special person and God loves you. Congrats. Hi, Bishop Kulik. Congrats on being the new bishop. Congratulations for being elected bishop. I know you'll do great. Have a wonderful, blessed, holy day. Congratulations, and always follow and love God. Congratulations, you are going to be a great bishop. Love you. Congratulations for becoming a bishop. It's so good to have you as a bishop. God, may God bless you. Just wanted to say, believe in yourself because I believe in you. I hope you have the best day when you become bishop. May God always be with you. On behalf of our entire school community, congratulations, Bishop Kulik. We could not be more pleased. And now I know a few of my special friends would like to say hello. Congratulations, Bishop. Congratulations, Bishop. Congratulations, Bishop Kulik. It's good to see a local boy like us do good. Congratulations. We're glad that you're our new bishop. Benedicat TV, Dominus et Custodiat, Ut Ot. Congratulations, Bishop Kulik from CDT School. Congratulations, Bishop Kulik. From all of us at Mary Queen of Apostles School, we pray that God gives you guidance as you lead our diocese. I think it's really nice that you are our new bishop, and I think it's really cool that you are from my home church. I am very excited to have someone related to the Kulik's um, where I live on Old Shumley Road as our future bishop. 
We are students at Mary Queen of Apostles School and members of St. Joseph Church in New Kensington. You may not remember, but many years ago you baptized us. Congratulations and many blessings in the future. We will continue to pray for you. We are praying for you. Thank you for loving Catholic schools. I remember when I bought you a priest at St. Joseph Church. Congratulations, Bishop Kulik and Bravo. We've got a feeling this is only the beginning of the beginning of great things to come for you. A heartfelt congratulations to you. We see you fighting the good fight and leading us into more faith-filled lives. Feeling so much joy for you today. Celebrating the dedication you've shown on the way to this achievement. Congratulations. Sending you heartfelt congratulations today and wishing you all the best. We're excited to have a new leader that is familiar with the area and the diocese. We know you'll do a great job. Good luck from all of us at Mother of Sorrows. Bishop Kulik, we are so incredibly proud of you and wish you the best of luck as you embark on this new journey that God has called you to do. We've had the honor and privilege of knowing you for many years. During this time, you've married us, baptized our children, supported us through the loss of loved ones, and offered us spiritual guidance whenever it was needed. We're truly blessed to have you in our lives. We always knew your kindness, compassion, loyalty, and devotion to God's work would take you far in your faithful journey. Congratulations, Bishop Kolek.
On behalf of the staff of the Catholic Accent, we thank you for joining us today for this much-anticipated event. Please stay tuned for the Episcopal ordination. Remember to text FAITH to the number 724-305-3057 to stay connected to the Diocese of Greensburg. You are watching the live stream Episcopal ordination and installation of Bishop Larry Kulik, 6th Bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg. In an abundance of caution and in order to prioritize the health and safety of the faith community, attendance today is extremely limited and by invitation only, unfortunately. I am Monsignor James Gaston, pastor of Mother of Sorrows Church in Murraysville, Pennsylvania. And joining me is Monsignor Michael Begali, the pastor of Mount St. Peter's Church, St. Joseph Church, and St. Mary of Chestahova Church in New Kensington, Pennsylvania. At the request of Bishop Kulik, we are serving as commentators today to create a better understanding of the Mass and the installation and ordination ceremony for those who are watching remotely. We welcome you. Bishop Kulik is a native of Leechburg and is the first native son and priest of the Diocese of Greensburg to be appointed its bishop. We thank you for joining us for this much-anticipated event. His Excellency, the Most Reverend Nelson Perez, Metropolitan Archbishop of Philadelphia, is the principal consecrator. His Excellency, Bishop Edward Molesic, Bishop of Cleveland, and His Excellency, Bishop Lawrence Brandt, Bishop Emeritus of Greensburg, are serving as co-consecrators. The celebration is in the presence of His Excellency, the Most Reverend Archbishop Christophe Pierre, the Apostolic Nuncio to the United States. He will be presenting the papal bull from His Holiness Pope Francis, which announced the appointment of Bishop-elect Kulik on December 18, 2020, as the sixth bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg. The back doors of the cathedral are opening and the entrance procession is about to begin. Monsignor Gaston will give the name of some of the attending bishops. The bishops will be last in the uh, procession, but among those attending are Bishop Lawrence Persico, uh, the Bishop of Erie and a former priest of the Diocese of Greensburg, Bishop Mark Barczyk of the Diocese of Altoona Johnstown, a Bishop Ronald Gaynor of the Diocese of Harrisburg, a Bishop David Zubik, the Bishop of the Diocese of Pittsburgh, and his auxiliary Bishop, Bishop William Watersh Walterscheid, uh, the Bishop Emeritus of Greensburg and one of the co-consecrators will be uh, Bishop Lawrence Brandt, and the, uh, from the Diocese of Cleveland, Bishop Edward Molesic, again, one of the co-consecrators uh, of Bishop Kulik. The Apostolic Nuncio is present, Archbishop Christophe Pierre, the Bishop of Allentown is Bishop Alfred Schlert, and then the, uh, the, the Archbishop of Philadelphia and the presiding bishop is Archbishop Nelson Perez with two of his auxiliary bishops from Philadelphia, uh, Bishop John McIntyre and uh, Bishop Michael Fitzgerald. There are also three uh, Eastern Rite bishops present, uh, the, and they will, you'll see their garb is a little bit different than the Roman Rite bishops. Uh, bishop Boris Gudziak, who's the Metropolitan, uh, Metropolitan um, of, the, of the Arch Eparchy of Philadelphia, the Ukrainians. Uh, bishop William Skirla, Archbishop William Skirla from the Metropolitan Arch Eparchy of the Pittsburgh Byzantine Diocese. And from the Byzantine Catholic Eparchy of Parma, uh, Bishop Milan Locke. Mm -hmm. 
we see Bishop Kulik now entering with the two priests assisting him, Monsignor uh, Raymond Riffle, the rector of the Blessed Sacrament Cathedral, and a classmate uh, of Father um, Bishop Malesic, Father, Father Carl Shilkin, who's the vicar general of the Diocese of Fort Worth, Texas. And now you see the bishops in procession coming in. Once the bishops take their place, Monsignor Raymond Riffle, the pastor and rector of Blessed Sacrament Cathedral, will be offering us words of welcome. Sharing new life, salvation's reward. In the name of Christ Jesus. Laudate, on this Laudate, exultate, jubilate, Omniscientes, laudate, laudate, omniscientes, laudate, dominum, exultate, jubilate, perra nos domini, omniscientes. In the life of Christ, through the blood he shed, we are justified and by him are fed, nourished by word and God's living bread. Study for the priesthood. In the name of Christ Jesus. We have three men who are in theology and the others are still in their college years. So we invite and ask your prayers for our seminarians that they may continue on their journey and that the Lord may continue to deepen their faith as they journey towards priesthood. The priests who process in and are sitting in the front on the right facing, excuse me, the left facing the altar are the College of Deans of the Diocese as well as the College of Consultors who advise the bishop on essential matters where he is obliged to consult on matters facing the diocese. By the Spirit's power we are sanctified. The Archbishop will now incense the altar. Incense is used to reverence those things that are holy, and so he will walk around the altar. He will also pause and incense the crucifix hanging above the altar. Book of Alt the Book of the Gospels is placed on the altar, it was carried in by the deacon, and it will be placed over Bishop Kulik's head as the prayer of consecration is prayed today. Last evening at the evening prayer, Bishop Persico presided, and he reminded Bishop-elect Kulik that as of March 10th, in a month, the Diocese of Greensburg will celebrate its 70th anniversary. It was formed in March of 1951. Its first bishop was the auxiliary bishop coming from Philadelphia, Bishop Hugh Lamb. Archbishop Perez now is going to the catheter, that is the bishop's chair. He will preside from there and later in the ceremony, he will escort the new bishop of Greensburg, Bishop Kovic, and seat him in that chair which is the seat of the diocese, and the chair from which all teaching about the faith comes. Above the cathedra, the chair is the new coat of arms of Bishop Kulik, half of which is on the right is his own personal coat of arms, and on the left it is attached to the coat of arms of the diocese of Greensburg, they are read together in his appointment as bishop.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. As we come together to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sin. Okay. Please, be Please be seated. Monsignor Riffle will now offer a welcome to everyone to the liturgy. Good afternoon. My name is Monsignor Raymond Riffle, Rector of Blessed Sacrament Cathedral. In the name of the Diocese of Greensburg, it is my great honor to welcome you to Blessed Sacrament Cathedral, the Mother Church of the Diocese of Greensburg. As we gather to celebrate the ordination and installation liturgy of Bishop-elect Larry James Kulik as the sixth Bishop of Greensburg. Like so many things we have done differently during the pandemic this past year, today's liturgy is no exception. Bishop-elect has desired more than anything to have so many more of you, the priests and people of the Diocese of Greensburg, gather here today to be a part of this historic moment. However, in an abundance of caution and in order to prioritize the health and safety of the entire faith community, as you will see, our actual in-person attendance today is extremely limited. However, Bishop-elect has asked me to share with you that as soon as it is safely possible, he will be going out to the parishes and schools of the diocese to meet with you personally and to celebrate the faith we all love and share in this wonderful diocese of Greensburg. So whether you are here in person watching us on social media, listening on WAOB radio, or watching on the Eternal Word television network, EWTN, we are happy that you have joined us to celebrate this wonderful day in the history of the Diocese of Greensburg. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the presence of just a few of the people gathered here for today's special ceremony. In attendance here today are Bishop-elect's parents, Larry and Myrna Kulik Sr., his aunt and uncle, Anthony and Donna Krasowski, his sisters and brother, Lisa Blake, Lori O'Shea, and Eric Kulik, as well as numerous of his family and friends. We are extremely honored this afternoon to have with us His Excellency Archbishop Christophe Pierre, Apostolic Nuncio to the United States. His Excellency, the Most Reverend Nelson Perez, Metropolitan Archbishop of Philadelphia, and the Principal Ordaining Bishop today. His Excellency, Bishop Edward C. Malesic, the Bishop of the Diocese of Cleveland, as well as His Excellency, Bishop Lawrence E. Brandt, Bishop Emeritus of the Diocese of Greensburg, who are both co-ordaining bishops this afternoon. Also in attendance, are many of the bishops of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and representation from Christian Associates of Southwest Pennsylvania. Finally, present here today are the vicars of the Diocese of Greensburg as well as the College of Consultors and representatives of the clergy of the diocese. Again, welcome to each of you. Together, let us now pray with and for Bishop Alec Kulik as he assumes the role of Chief Shepherd for the Diocese of Greensburg. Blessings to him and to you all. Coming together to celebrate the Father's love, we call to mind our sin. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, 
You are word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria. Gloria. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Asking his prayers for us this day. The Gloria, as you know, will be sung during the season of Lent, so it has a high place of honor today as we approach Lent next week on Lunch Wednesday. The ordination of a bishop is a very important moment in the life of a diocese. The bishop-elect is already a priest, ordained to preach the gospel, to shepherd the faithful, and to celebrate the divine liturgy. The ordination lifts him to a deeper level of responsibility, because now he'll be responsible for a much larger flock than simply being the pastor of a parish. And he must be a father to his priests. Since he will have greater duties and responsibilities, he needs greater divine gifts in order to meet them. A priest could not meet these requirements of the office of bishop on his own power. This is only possible through the power of the Holy Spirit. In the Gloria, we acknowledge the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Spirit, and our prayer today is that God's Holy Spirit will indeed fill Bishop Kulik as he begins his ministry. Let us pray. O oh God, who out of an abundance of your untold grace alone chose to set your servant and priest Lawrence over the Church of Greensburg this day, grant that he may carry out worthily the office of bishop, and under your governance in all things, he may direct by word and example the people entrusted to his care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Having concluded the opening part of the Mass, 
We now prepare to listen to God's word addressed to the assembly and to Bishop Alec Kulik. We will hear first a reading from the Old Testament from the prophet Isaiah, and then St. Paul's address to Timothy in one of the pastoral epistles, and finally, a gospel passage from the gospel according to St. John. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God, to comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm that will be sung is Psalm 89. It was composed by the organist here at Blessed Sacrament Cathedral, Christopher Pardini. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, 
I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake, but bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was anointed preacher and apostle and teacher. On this account, I am suffering these things, but I am not ashamed, for I know him in whom I have believed, and I am confident that he is able to guard what has been entrusted to me until that day. Take as your norm the sound words that you heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard this rich trust with the help of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. The word of the Lord. The proclamation of the gospel is always accompanied by signs of honor. And so the assembly will stand as the festival Alleluia is sung. The festival Alleluia was composed by a priest from Pittsburgh, James Chaponis during the procession with the gospel book. It is accompanied by candles and incense, just as a way of honoring the book of the gospels, but remembering that the book contains the word of God. And the word of God that is proclaimed is nothing less than Jesus himself as he speaks God's word to us. Now we'll take the gospel in procession to the emperor and proclaim the gospel to the assembly. According to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. 
After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, he said to Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. The Gospel of the Lord. Ordinarily, at the conclusion of the Gospel, the one who is reading the Gospel kisses the Gospel book. He kisses Jesus Christ, the Word of God. But in this instance, the deacon brings the book to Archbishop Perez, who will kiss the Gospel book as a sign of reverence. He will then take the book of the Gospels and bless the people with the book of the Gospels. In the rite of ordination now, and the homily will take place as part of the rite of ordination. We begin the rite of ordination with an invocation of the Holy Spirit, calling down the gift of God's Spirit upon Bishop-elect Kolik, soon to be Bishop Kolik. Veni creator spiritus. Mentis tuarum visita in plesu per gratia, que tu creasti pectora. simple chant, Come Holy Spirit, is now followed by a hymn to the Holy Spirit, O Spirit, all-embracing. The rite of ordination goes back all the way to the New Testament, where we read in the Acts of the Apostles that seven deacons were ordained through the laying on of hands and prayer. And in the pastoral epistles, the letter to Timothy, St. Paul reminds Timothy, one of the bishops of the early church, to stir into flame the gift of the Spirit that God had given to him through the laying on of hands. Prayer and the laying on of hands were the essential elements of the rite of ordination. Over the course of time, other elements were added to the rite that we will experience today. In the third century, the apostolic tradition of Hippolytus notes, as it describes the ordination of a bishop, that the people pray silently, invoking the Holy Spirit, while the bishops impose their hands on the elect. This is followed by one of the bishops placing his hands on the elect and reciting the consecratory prayer, praying that the elect might shepherd the flock and fulfill his office in a blameless manner, offering sacrifice and forgiving sins. After the prayer, all exchange the kiss of peace and salute the one who has been made worthy. The deacons then place the gifts on the altar and the newly ordained bishop celebrates the Eucharist at once. Between the 6th and 9th centuries, we see the addition of the deacons holding the open book of the Gospels over the head of the bishop as the ordaining bishop says the prayer of consecration. 
The ancient practice of Rome was for a bishop to present himself invested in the insignia of his office, while in the 7th century, Isidore of Seville attests to the practice of giving the new bishop his ring and pastoral staff during the ceremony. Beginning in the 9th century, there is mention of the anointings with sacred chrism, which is first poured over the head of the bishop, and then his hands are anointed. In the 12th century, the custom of handing on the Book of the Gospels was added with the admonition that the bishop go and preach to the people committed to his care. Later additions to the rite include the singing of the Veni Sancte Spiritus, the Come Holy Spirit that we just heard, the enthronement of the bishop at his cathedral, and the singing of the Te Deum, a great hymn of praise at the end of the rite. The current rite of ordination is found in the Roman Pontifical, a book which contains the liturgical ceremony celebrated by a bishop, a confirmation and ordination, while the Ceremonial of Bishops, first published in 1600, is another book that describes the ceremonies and the liturgies to be celebrated by a bishop. Monsignor Begali gave us the history of the development of the rite. Very shortly now, we will see how that rite uh, is performed step by step. Bishop Alec Kulik comes forward and will be, be presented to Archbishop Perez by Monsignor Riffle. Most Reverend Father, the Church of Greensburg asks you to ordain this priest, Larry James Kulik, to the responsibility of the Episcopate. Have you a mandate from the Apostolic See? We have. Let it be read. Archbishop Christophe Pierre, the Apostolic Nuncio, will now read the papal bull from Pope Francis, naming Bishop Alec Kulik as the sixth bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg. Your Excellency, Metropolitan Archbishop Nelson Perez, Your Excellency, Bishop Emeritus Lawrence Brandt, and uh, Bishop Edward Malesic, Your Excellency, Bishop-elect Larry Kulik. It seems that everybody is called Larry here. <laughs> My brother as bishops and bishops, dear priests, deacons, consecrated religious and lay faithful of the Diocese of Greensburg, dear friends, indeed, it is a joy for me to join with all of you today as Monsignor Larry Kulik is ordained to the fullness of the priesthood and solemnly installed as the sixth bishop of Greensburg. Today is the feast of Our Lady of Lourdes and is also the World Day of the Sick. In his message for this day, Pope Francis wrote, the gospel frequently makes this clear by showing that Jesus heals not by magic, but as a result of an encounter, an interpersonal relationship in which God's gift finds a response in the faith of those who accept it. As Jesus often repeats, your faith has saved you. Your Excellency, Bishop Elek Kulik, 
The Holy Father has called you to be an instrument for facilitating this encounter and for deepening the relationship of the people of God with Christ himself. He is asking you to be a model of Christ, the Good Shepherd, and to show forth the face of a Samaritan church. As the new shepherd of this flock, I place before you the words of the Holy Father. I quote, A shepherd, after the heart of God, has a heart sufficiently free to set aside his own concerns. He does not live by calculating his gains or how long he has worked. He is not an accountant of the Spirit, but a good Samaritan who seeks out those in need. For the flock, he is a shepherd, not an inspector, and he devotes himself to the mission not 50 or 60 percent, but with all he has. In seeking, he finds, and he finds because he takes risks. Unless a shepherd risks, he does not find. He does not stop when disappointed, and he does not yield to weariness. Indeed, he is stubborn in doing good, anointed with the divine obstinacy that loses sight of no one. End of quote. Bishop Elect Kulik, inspired by those thoughts of the Holy Father, I ask you to take the risk demanded by love and to that genuinely love all those whom God has placed in your pastoral care, your clergy, religious and lay faithful, especially the poor, the infirm, the homeless, the community at large. We pray that by your holiness of life, you may everywhere prove to be a true witness to Christ, who is the good news and the face of the Father's mercy. I commend you to Our Lady of Lourdes and to Saint Joseph during this year dedicated to him, praying that you may be a true father to those entrusted to your care. Finally, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to Bishop Edward Malesic for his years of faithful service to this beloved local church before his transfer to the Sea of Cleveland. I think it's the last opportunity for him to applaud him. <laughs> and now, with great joy, I will read for you <coughs> the translation in English of the Apostolic Letter of Appointment signed by Pope Francis, and this letter will be shown to you later. Francis, Bishop, Servant of the Servants of God. To our beloved son, Larry James Kulik, from the clergy of the Diocese of Greensburg, and up to now, Diocese and Administrator there, as well as pastor of the parish dedicated to St. James in New Alexandria, appointed Bishop of the same local church greetings and apostolic blessing. When our Lord Jesus Christ came into this world, he established this church in order to restore the image of God in the souls of men and women, leading them forward to their dignity as heirs of the kingdom of heaven. From that time on, he handed over to the apostles and subsequently to the bishops the responsibility of carrying this out so that they might extend his saving work throughout the world and gather all the faithful into one family. Accordingly, as we fulfill our duty as the successor of Peter, we continually turn our thoughts to what will be the spiritual benefit to Christ faithful of the Catholic Church. And so at this time, we direct our attention to the community of Greensburg, 
which, owing to the transfer of our venerable brother, Edward Charles Malesic, to the Sea of Cleveland, currently stands in need of its own chief shepherd. Consequently, beloved son, it is our decision to choose you for this position, for you clearly stand out with a devout life, practical experience, learning, charity, and pastoral zeal. Therefore, upon consultation with the Congregation for Bishops, out of the fullness of our apostolic authority, we name and appoint you Bishop of Greensburg, conferring upon you the rights and obligations which belong to your mission. You may receive episcopal ordination from any Catholic bishop outside the city of Rome, the liturgical norms being observed. However, prior to this, as established by ecclesiastical law, you must make the profession of faith and take the oath of fidelity toward us and our successors in this sea. Finally, with the Blessed Virgin Mary interceding for you, we exhort you to exercise your Episcopal ministry following the example of St. Joseph who, in the course of that pilgrimage of faith, which was his life, remained faithful to God's call until the end. Given at Rome, at the Lateran, on the 18th day of the month of December, in the year of the Lord 2020, the eighth of our pontificate. And it is signed, Francis. That is the official pronouncement. The Apostolic Nuncio is handing the Papal Bowl to Bishop Kulik, who will now show it to the College of Consultors, the Priest Council, and those in attendance. Last evening at the evening prayer presided over by Bishop Persico, Bishop-elect Kulik at that time made his profession of faith and took his oath of fidelity to the Holy See. I think behind the mask, there probably is a big smile on the face of Bishop Kulik as he now has his, in his hand the apostolic decree naming him our sixth bishop. The assembly is applauding, acknowledging with great joy our sixth bishop. There is great attention to these details that link the local bishop to the chief shepherd of the Catholic Church, uh, His Holiness Pope Francis. The reading of the document, it comes directly from the Holy Father. Every bishop is appointed by the Holy Father following a consultation process. And it plays out today in the way we saw it uh, just occur, and the document makes it official. And uh, Bishop Lekulik now is making sure everybody at least sees that there is a document. It is in black and white, and it is for real. And he is our new shepherd. The servers are moving into place the fault stool, the special stool that the Archbishop will sit on as he ordains Bishop Kulik. He will now preach the homily. I'm not sure if he'll do that from the ambo or from the fault stool. Either would be appropriate. But we look forward to Archbishop Perez's words words of instruction to Bishop Kulik and words to the entire diocese 
urging us to accept with great affection our sixth bishop. His Excellency Archbishop Pierre, thank you so much for being here among us and with us to celebrate this wonderful day in the history of the Diocese of Greensburg. And Bishop Malesic, I welcome you back to Pennsylvania. Again, congratulations on being in my former diocese. <laughs> congratulations. Thank you for all you did for Greensburg and for all you did for the church. In some ways, um, this change, this whole change kind of began with me. <laughs> and hopefully now it ends, right? <laughs> because a year ago, um, I got a call like you did a few, week, a few weeks ago. Um, and don't answer these calls anymore, okay, <laughs> Bishop? When you get that, now you know what these calls are like, right? You get this call, and it's all very nice, and how are you doing? And then comes, I've heard it three times now, then comes the famous question, are you alone? <laughs> and my brother bishops know what that follows, that question. And so I was sent, I was uh, in Cleveland, and I was sent back to my home diocese of Philadelphia. And then a few months later, Bishop Malexic got a call, and they asked him if he was alone. <laughs> and we all know what happened there. He went to Cleveland. And then, and then Larry, you got a call, and I'm sure they asked you if you were alone. And it's such a great joy, uh, I'm sure, for you to now have uh, uh, your bishop right from here. Right? So congratulations on being appointed by the Holy Father. I'm sure that for all of you, those who are here today, and, and for my brother priests here, and people that work in diocesan instructions and pastoral centers, as soon as Bishop Molesic was sent off to Cleveland, you all started thinking, now who's it going to be? What's he going to be like? And I'm sure that when Larry was uh, announced as your next bishop, you all went, oh, thank God. <laughs> you certainly won't have the learning curve that some of us have had when we've had to go to other dioceses. Uh, you're a son of this local church, and, and you bring to this church great blessing and, and knowledge and love and care. And you know that this would have never happened, we would not be here today, if it actually wasn't for two people. And they're right here. Please stand and give them a round of applause. Thank you for the gift of your son to the church. Little did you know, when he was running around as a kid, doing no God knows what, that th that little kid would end up being the Bishop of Greensburg. And now you're watching it. Yeah, you're shaking your head. <laughs> yeah, it is surreal, isn't it? And now that little kid is about to be made the Bishop of, Cle of Greensburg. What an incredible blessing. And, and an honor to you because this wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for you and what you taught him. So thank you for the gift that you give uh, to the church and for your family. Now you gotta respect this guy. <laughs> you gotta call him your excellency. 
<laughs> Listen. <laughs> Bishop elect, and you're going to be dropping the elect in just a few minutes, okay? Uh, I do want to share with you just some thoughts, and they're not my thoughts. They're actually thoughts from the Holy Father, who spoke to all of us bishops on his visit to the United States. And I would, and I would invite you to read that homily, beautiful homily. But I took three little sections. I'm just going to let his words speak to your heart. We are bishops of the church, shepherds appointed by God to feed his flock. Our greatest joy is to be shepherds, and only shepherds, pastors with undivided hearts and selfless devotion. We need to preserve this joy and never let ourselves be robbed of it. The evil one roars like a lion, anxious to devour it, wearing us down in our resolve to be all that we are called to be. Not for ourselves, but in the gift and service to the shepherd of our souls. The heart of our identity is to be sought in constant prayer, he says, in preaching and in shepherding the flock entrusted to our care. And finally, this last thought. Be pastors close to people. Pastors who are neighbors and servants. Let this closeness be expressed in a special way towards your priests. Support them so that they can continue to serve Christ with an undivided heart, for this alone can bring fulfillment to ministers of Christ. Allow those words to speak to your own heart. And so let's listen to the words of the church in its instruction on the order ordination of a bishop. And then let's make you a bishop. Beloved, consider carefully the nature of the rank in the church to which our brother is about to be raised. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who was sent by the Father to redeem the human race, in turn sent 12 apostles into the world. They were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit to preach the gospel and to sanctify and govern all the people gathered into one flock. Moreover, that this office might remain to the end of time, the apostles chose helpers for themselves. Through the laying on of hands, by which the fullness of the sacrament of holy orders is conferred, they handed on to them the gift of the Holy Spirit, which they have received from Christ. In that way, the tradition handed down from the beginning through the unbroken succession of bishops is preserved from generation to generation and the work of the Savior continues on and grows even to our own times. In the bishop, surrounded by his priest, our Lord Jesus Christ himself, having become high priest forever, is present among you. For through the ministry of the bishop, Christ himself never fails to proclaim the gospel and to administer the sacraments of faith to those who believe. Through the bishop's exercise of his duty as father, Christ himself adds new members to his body. Through the bishop's wisdom and prudence, it is Christ himself who leads you in your earthly pilgrimage toward eternal happiness. Gladly and gratefully, therefore, welcome our brother, whom we, the bishops, now admit into our college by the laying on of hands. Revere him as a minister of Christ and a steward of the mysteries of God. He has been entrusted with the task of bearing witness to the truth of the gospel and with the ministry of the spirit and of justice. 
Remember the words Christ spoke to the apostles. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. And whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. And now, dear brother, who has been chosen by the Lord, consider that you are chosen from among men and appointed on their behalf for those things that pertain to God. The title of bishop is one of service, not of honor, and therefore a bishop should strive to benefit others rather than lord it over them. Such is the precept of the master. The greater should behave as the least, and the ruler as the servant. Preach the word in season and out of season. Reprove with all patience and sound teaching. As you pray and offer sacrifice for the people committed to your care, devote yourself wholeheartedly to seeking every kind of grace for them and for the fullness of Christian of Christ's holiness. In the church entrusted to you, be a faithful steward, moderator, and guardian of the mysteries of Christ. Since you are chosen by the Father to rule over his family, be mindful always of the Good Shepherd, who knows his sheep and is known by them, and who did not hesitate to lay down his life for them. With the charity of a father and brother, love all of whom God places in your care, especially the priests and deacons who are your co-workers in the ministry of Christ but also the poor and the weak, immigrants and strangers. Exhort the faithful to work with you in your apostolic labor. Do not refuse to listen willingly to them. Never relax your concern for those who are not yet gathered into the one fold of Christ. They too are entrusted to you in the Lord. Never forget that you are joined to the College of Bishops in the Catholic Church made one by the bond of charity, and therefore you should have a constant concern for all the churches and gladly come to the support of churches in need. And in so keep watch over the whole flock, in which the Holy Spirit appoints you to govern the church of God, in the name of the Father, whose image you represent in the church, and in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, whose office of teacher priest, and shepherd, you will discharge. And in the name of the Holy Spirit, who gives life to you in the Church of Christ, and by his power, strengthens us in our weakness. Bishop Kulik will now come forward and will be asked to make... certain promises. There are nine questions that Archbishop Perez will ask him. The answer, of course, is I do. Bishop Malesic and Bishop Emeritus Brandt will also join Archbishop Perez at the altar as together they will be the consecrating bishops of Bishop Kulik. The ancient rule of the Holy Fathers ordained that a bishop-elect is to be questioned in the presence of the people on his resolve to uphold the faith and to discharge his duty. And so, dear brother, do you resolve by the grace of the Holy Spirit to discharge until death the office entrusted to us by the apostles, which we are about to pass on to you by the laying on of hands? I do. Do you resolve to preach the gospel of Christ with constancy and fidelity? I do. 
Do you resolve to guard the deposit of faith, entire and incorrupt, as handed down by the apostles and preserved in the church everywhere and at all times? I do. Do you resolve to build up the body of Christ as church and to remain in the unity of that body together with the order of bishops under the authority of the successor of St. Peter the Apostle? I do. Do you resolve to render obedience faithfully to the successor of the blessed Apostle Peter? I do. Do you resolve to guide the holy people of God in the way of salvation as a devoted father and sustain with them with the help of your fellow ministers, the priests and deacons? I do. Do you resolve, for the sake of the Lord's name, to be welcoming and merciful to the poor, to strangers, and to all in need? I do. Do you resolve, as a good shepherd, to seek out the sheep who stray and gather them into the Lord's fold? I do. Do you resolve to pray without ceasing to Almighty God for the holy people and to carry out the office of high priest without reproach? I do with the help of God. May God who has begun the good work in you bring it to fulfillment. Dearly beloved, let us pray that the kindness of Almighty God in providing for the welfare of the Church will grant an abundance of His grace for this chosen one. Let us kneel. The assembly now kneels, and Bishop-elect Kulik will prostrate himself on the floor of the sanctuary. We then call upon the intercession of all the saints to pray for Bishop-elect Kulik as he is ordained. From birth to death, the saints are an important part of our lives. And in the ritual of baptism, as well as the commendation of the dying, we call upon the saints to pray for us. In the ordination liturgies of the church as well, we call upon the saints We call upon Mary, we invoke the angels, we call upon the apostles, the martyrs, the confessors, the doctors of the church, the holy women and men of ages past to intercede for us. As part of the ordination liturgy, Bishop-elect chose several saints to be included in the litany, including Saint Martha, Martha St. Martha was the name of the parish that Bishop Kulik grew up in. He also chose Elizabeth Ann Seton, one of the American saints, as well as St. John Neumann. He chose also St. John Paul the Great and Saints Cyril and Methodius, the 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 apostles to the Slavs. As we continue to pray the Litany of Saints, I invite you to enter into the spirit of this moment as we call down their intercession for our new bishop. Saint Vincent, pray for us. Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity, pray for us. Saint Agnes, pray for us. Saint Gregory, pray for us. Saint Augustine, pray for us. Saint Athanasius, pray for us. Saint Edward, pray for us. Saint Catherine of Siena, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus, pray for us. 
Saint Cyril and Methodius, pray for us. Saint Benedict, pray for us. Saint Martin, pray for us. Saint Francis of Assisi, pray for us. Saint Dominic, pray for us. Saint John Vianney, pray for us. Saint Bernadette. Pray for us. Saint Elizabeth and Seaton. Pray for us. Saint John Neumann. Pray for us. Saint John Paul the Great. Pray for us. O holy men and women, saints of God. Pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from all evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every sin. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from everlasting death. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your incarnation, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners, Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Govern and protect your holy church. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the ordained in faithful service to your church. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Bless this chosen man. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify this chosen man. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Bless, sanctify, and consecrate this chosen man. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Stay kneeling. Graciously hear our petitions, O Lord, and pour out upon this your servant the power of your blessing, flowing from the horn of priestly grace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us stand. In silence now, the ordaining bishops will impose hands on Bishop-elect Kulik. This ancient gesture has been used to confer the power of the Holy Spirit and hand down the power of the Episcopal order. Those bishops who are in attendance will also come forward and impose hands, signifying the collegiality of the order of bishops.
Bishop Malesic and Bishop Brand impose hands, and they will be followed by all other bishops present for the ordination. Now that the bishops have imposed hands on Bishop Kulik, the Book of Gospels will be placed over his head, reminding him that one of his chief obligations is to preach the Word of God. While the Book of Gospels is held above his head, all the bishops join in the prayer now of ordination. The placing of the Book of Gospels serves as a reminder that the faithful preaching of God's Word is the preeminent obligation of the office of the bishop. God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, who dwell on high and look upon the lowly, who know all things before they come to be, and who lay down observances in your church through the word of your grace, who from the beginning foreordained a nation for the just, born of Abraham, who established rulers and priests, and did not leave your sanctuary without ministers, and who from the foundation of the world were pleased to be glorified in those you have chosen. Pour out upon this chosen one that power which is from you in the governing spirit whom you gave to your beloved son, Jesus Christ, the spirit whom he bestowed upon the apostles who established the church in each place as your sanctuary for the glory and unceasing praise of your name. Grant, O Father, knower of all hearts, that this your servant, whom you have chosen for the office of bishop, may shepherd your holy flock. Serving you day and night, may he fulfill before you without reproach the ministry of the high priesthood, so that always gaining your favor, he may offer up the gifts of your holy church. Grant that by the power of the spirit of the high priesthood, he may have the power to forgive sins according to your command, assign offices according to your decree, and loose every bond according to the power given by you to the apostles. May he please you by his meekness and purity of heart, presenting a fragrant offering to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom glory and power and honor are yours with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, 
now and forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The book of the Gospels is now removed. And following the prayer of ordination, Archbishop Perez will anoint the head of Bishop Kulik with sacred chrism, signifying the full share in the priesthood of Christ, which he has received through the laying on of hands and the prayer of ordination. That follows next. Chrism is one of the three oils blessed by the bishop on Holy Thursday every year. The oil of catechumens, the oil of the sick, and the sacred chrism. And the chrism is mixed with a, a balsamic, bal, a balsam a fragrance, which gives it a wonderful aroma. It's used in baptism, confirmation, the ordination of priest, bishop, anointing of the altar, of a new altar or a new church, um, used as a, as, as a way of seeing and, and of attaching the sacredness to the person and the object being used for worship. Bishop Kulik has been draped with a towel as the bishop, Archbishop Perez, will pour the chrism on his head. May God, who has made you a share in the history, in the priesthood of a high priesthood of Christ, himself pour upon you the oil of gladness, the, the mystical anointing, and make you fit, fruitful with an abundance of spiritual blessing. Bishop is being led back to the sacristy where he will wash his hands and then he will return to be presented the book of the Gospels. You may have noticed that Archbishop Perez was draped with a gremial, which is a linen apron, just to prevent the sacred chrism from dripping on his vestments. Father Tyler Bandora is now wiping up the excess oil that has dripped from Bishop Kulik. It's always wonderful to have an outpouring of the gift of the Holy Spirit symbolized by an abundant pouring of the sacred chrism. By all means, these symbols should be used very generously, and they have done so today. The hymn being sung, Heart of a Shepherd, by Rory Co Co Cooney, is certainly very appropriate. It contains the words of the Lord Jesus, If you love me, feed my lambs. Be my heart, my voice, my hands. If you love me, feed my sheep. And for my part, I give you the heart of a shepherd. We're so grateful that God has given Bishop Kulik, the heart of a shepherd, certainly in his pastoral ministry in the diocese for the past some years. He has been a very hands-on pastor, and he has shared generously of himself in the ministry. I'm the pastor in New Kensington now, and Bishop Kulik was once the pastor of St. Joseph Parish in New Kensington for six years. We are deeply grateful and indebted to him for the work that he did there in the parish, helping create and build a strong community of faith. 
It is that that we hope and pray that he will continue to do through the rest of the diocese as he shares with them God's word, the sacraments, and the teaching of the church. Bishop Kulik's family, as you can see, has lined up and will be presenting him with the insignia of his office, the ring, the mitre, and the crozier, symbols of the office of bishop. The ring symbolizes his fidelity uh, to the bride of God, the church. The mitre, worn on his head, signifies his resolve to pursue holiness, and the crozier, or the pastoral staff, signifies the duty of guiding and governing the church, the Diocese of Greensburg entrusted to him today. As Bishop Kulik returns to Archbishop Perez, he will be handed the Book of the Gospels, a reminder of his duty to preach preach the the Word word always and everywhere. With all patience and sound teaching. Bishop Kulik's parents, Larry and Myrna, are presenting him with the ring. Receive this ring, the seal of fidelity, adorned with undefiled faith. Preserve unblemished the bride of God, the Holy Church. Next, his uncle and aunt, Anthony and Donna Krasowski, will present him with the mitre. Receive the mitre, and may the splendor of holiness shine forth in you, so that when the chief shepherd appears, you may deserve to receive from him an unfading crown of glory. Bishop Kulik's siblings, Lisa, Lori, and Eric, will present his pastoral staff which was the crozier of the pastoral staff of the first Bishop of Greensburg, Bishop Hugh Lamb. Receive the crozier, the sign of your pastoral office, and keep watch over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as bishop to govern the church of God. This concludes the ordination rite itself, and now Bishop Kulik will be led to the cathedra where he will be seated and officially take possession of the Diocese of Greensburg as its sixth bishop. If you love me, feed my love. 
heart, my voice, my hands. If you love me, feed my sheep, and for my part. He is Bishop-elect no longer. Welcome, Bishop Larry Peter. Because of the bishop's devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, we will now hear the Ave Maria as the bishops exchange the sign of peace with the, the new Bishop of Greensburg. The Ave Maria will be sung once the heart of a shepherd concludes. Stream Episcopal ordination and installation of Bishop Larry Kulik, sixth bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg. In an abundance of caution and in order to prioritize the health and safety of the faith community, attendance has been extremely limited today and unfortunately by invitation only. I'm Monsignor James Gaston and with me Monsignor Michael Bigali. At the request of Bishop Kulik, our role is to serve as commentators, happily so today, to create a better understanding of the Mass for those watching it remotely. Bishop Kulik is a native of Leechburg and is the first native son and priest of the diocese to be appointed bishop for the Diocese of Greensburg. We thank you for joining us in this much anticipated event. His Excellency, the Most Reverend Nelson Perez, the Metropolitan Archbishop of Philadelphia, was the principal consecrator, assisted by His Excellency, Bishop Edward Molesic, Bishop of Cleveland, and former Bishop of our Diocese here in Greensburg, and His Excellency, Bishop Lawrence Brandt, Bishop Emeritus of Greensburg, served as co-consecrators. The celebration is in the presence of His Excellency, the Most Reverend Archbishop Christophe Pierre, the Apostolic Nuncio to the United States. He, present, he presented the Papal Bull from His Holiness Pope Francis, announcing the appointment of Bishop-elect of Bishop Kulik on December 18, 2020, as the sixth bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg.
If you notice the bishops sitting around Bishop Kulik, those bishops wearing a crown are from the Eastern Rite, Ukrainian Ruthenian Rite of the, of the Church. And there's one uh, other uh, person, uh, that's the Archabbot of St. Vincent, Martin Bartel, who wears a black skull cap. He is not a bishop, but he wears a mitre as a sign of his office as the Archabbot of St. Vincent Archabbey. St. Vincent has been a major player and part of the Diocese of Greensburg from day one because uh, the Diocese of Greensburg was formed from the territory that, that was St. Vincent's Archabbey since 1846. It was mentioned earlier that today is the Feast of Our Lady of Lord, and it's also the World Day of the Sick. And so as we hear the Ave Maria being sung, we ask Mary's intercession for all those who are sick, especially in this time of the pandemic. We pray for those who have contracted the Corona-19 virus, and we pray that they may be healed. We give thanks also for doctors, nurses, all healthcare workers and first responders, for those serving on the front line, for their important work in ministering to those who are sick and suffering because of the pandemic. Bishop Kulik now comes to the altar and is now the presider for the remainder of the liturgy. Once again, we use incense at this part of the liturgy as a reminder that the gifts will be made holy and the bread and wine become for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ. As Bishop incenses the altar, the organist is playing the diocesan hymn, Risen Lord, We Gather Round You. It was commissioned in 2001 by Bishop Anthony Bosco for the 50th anniversary of the Diocese of Greensburg. The third stanza of the hymn, Shepherd of your chosen people, make your churches bishops strong. Bless the one now sent to lead us, place your gospel on his tongue. Free his hands for humble service. Fill his heart with faith and love. Help him live the life he teaches. Grant him wisdom from above. Certainly words that are very appropriate for our diocesan church today as we ask the blessing of God's Spirit, the strength of Jesus himself, and the intercession of all the saints to inspire him as he begins this important work of shepherding the flock of Greensburg. were incensed as a sign of reverence and asking God to make them holy, and now the assembly will be incensed as well. First the order of bishops, then the order of presbyters, the priests who were present, and then all the faithful. Reminder that all of us, by virtue of who we are as God's beloved children, are called to lives of holiness.
As the order of presbyters are incensed, we noted that they stood, as well as the order of bishops, they stood, and now the faithful will stand, and we will see bishop-elect. Our Bishop Kolick's family standing there on the right of your screen, um, and they will be incensed as well as the others in attendance at the liturgy. Because of the pandemic and social distancing required, the church is not filled, but we know had we not been in the pandemic, the church would have been full to overflowing because of the love and affection that people in our diocese have for Bishop Kolek. We've received pictures around the schools of the diocese and with a lot of different people participating on this through a live stream in it. They are just absolutely beautiful pictures of how technology is helping us to reach those who cannot be in the same place at the same time. Since the Eucharistic liturgy is at the heart of our prayer, Monsignor Gaston and I will not be speaking or offering commentary during the Eucharistic prayer so that we may truly enter into the spirit of the prayer as we give thanks to God for all the blessings that he lavishes upon us and especially today for the gift of our new shepherd. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that this one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in the sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are renewed in his name, the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you 
a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protection. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for me, your unworthy servant, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of bishops, and in your mercy keep safe your gift in me, so that what I have received by divine commission I may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as ones who were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants and all who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these things good, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. Forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. prayer into the communion rite. With the praying of the Lord's Prayer, the entire assembly acclaimed that God is our loving Father. In the person of the bishop, with the presbyters, the priests gathered around him, the Lord Jesus Christ, the high priest himself, is present in the midst of the faithful. Seated at the right hand of the Father, Christ is never absent from the gathering of his priests. They have been chosen to feed the Lord's flock, and they are Christ's ministers and the stewards of the mysteries of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. The ceremony of bishops described the bishop as the steward of the grace of the supreme priesthood. On him depend both the priests and the deacons in the exercise of their orders in the diocese. Presbyters, who were appointed to be prudent co-workers of the order of bishops, are themselves consecrated as true priests of the New Testament. And deacons serve as ministers ordained to service for the people of God in communion with the bishop and his presbyters. The bishop himself is the chief steward of the mysteries of God and the overseer, promoter, and guardian of all liturgical life in the diocese entrusted to his care. And to him is committed the office of offering to the divine majesty the worship of Christian religion and of administering it in accordance with the Lord's commandments and the church's laws. Diocesan liturgy, the liturgy at which the bishop presides, is to serve as a model for the rest of the diocese. Bishop Kulik has a great love for the liturgy, and I'm sure that he will set a great example for us as he leads our diocese in prayer. The first of our communion hymns today is Panis Angelicus. Panis Angelicus, which translates as Bread of Angels, is a verse from the hymn Sacris Solemnis, written by St. Thomas Aquinas for the Feast of Corpus Christi in the 13th century. This verse later became famous in its own right. The hymn is sung in Latin, but the translation is, May the bread of angels become bread for all mankind. The bread of heaven puts all foreshadowings to an end. O thing miraculous, the body of the Lord will nourish the poor, the poor, the servile, 
and the humble. You are watching the live stream Episcopal ordination and installation of Bishop Larry Kulik, the sixth bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg. In an abundance of caution and in order to prioritize the health and safety of the faith community, attendance had to be extremely limited today and by invitation only. I'm Monsignor James Gaston, along with Monsignor Michael Begali. At Bishop Kulik's requests, uh, we are serving as commentators today to create a better understanding of this ordination and installation mass for those who are watching it remotely. Bishop Kulik is a native of Leechburg, Pennsylvania, and is the first native son and priest of this diocese to be appointed bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg. We thank you very much for joining us today for this much anticipated event. For those not able to be present physically, we pray the prayer, making a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Ush 
The Slovak song being sung now is O Sorrowful Mother. You are our dearest patroness of the people. Pray to your son for all of us and our nation. Amen. Once again, we thank you for your participation in this Episcopal liturgy. His Excellency, the Most Reverend Nelson Perez, the Metropolitan Archbishop of Philadelphia, was the principal consecrator. His Excellency, Bishop Molesic, Bishop of Cleveland, and His Excellency, Bishop Lawrence Brandt, Bishop Emeritus of Greensburg, served as co-consecrators. The celebration was in the presence of His Excellency, the Most Reverend Archbishop Christophe Pierre, the Apostolic Nuncio to the United States. He presented the papal bull from His Holiness Pope Francis, announcing the appointment of Bishop Kulik on December 18, 2020. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. Bishop Kulik, accompanied by Bishop Brandt and Bishop Molesic, now walks down the center aisle of the cathedral, giving his first blessing as the bishop to the assembly. And that also extends to all those participating through live stream or in any way today. Thank you so much for being with us. God bless you. The hymn of praise, the Te Deum, is sung at the end of all major liturgies in the church. The second verse today will be sung in Slovak, given Bishop Kulik's Slovak heritage.
Good afternoon. <laughs> I would like to begin my remarks this afternoon by taking this opportunity to thank everyone who has joined us here today, either in person at Blessed Sacrament Cathedral or through our varied multimedia platforms. A special word of welcome to those watching this ordination and installation mass on the Eternal Word television network or listening on WAOB, We Are One Body Radio. I am deeply humbled and honored to be with you today as your new bishop, and I am grateful to God for this opportunity to serve as the sixth bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg. This is a diocese that is our home, a diocese that we love, and a diocese that is filled with so many wonderful clergy, consecrated religious men and women, and tremendously gifted and generous laity. I am humbled and honored to have this opportunity to serve and do not take this responsibility lightly or without the full knowledge that in order to accomplish the tasks set before me, I need God's grace and your assistance. I look forward to our time together and beginning my Episcopal ministry in the wonderful four counties of our beloved diocese, which we know so well. Today we gather together and give thanks to God for the gift of our lives and vocations, for the gift of our faith, for the gift of God's grace, for the gift of his church, which he established and continually provides for in all times and in all seasons throughout the centuries. In one generation after another, United in one spirit, we pledge anew our common baptismal promise to serve God faithfully in his holy church and to proclaim the good news of salvation to all. In a special way today, on this feast of Our Lady of Lords, we seek the intercession of our Blessed Virgin Mary, that healing, strength, and peace may come to all who are experiencing any type of sickness or illness, especially all of those who have been affected in any way during this time of the pandemic. We pray for the physical healing of those affected by this terrible virus, we pray for all who care for the sick, that they may continue to be strengthened as they carry out the corporal and spiritual works of mercy to those afflicted. And we pray and remember in a special way all of those who have lost their lives from this disease. May they find eternal rest and peace. Today is also a day of joy, but also a day of gratitude. We thank God for providing for the needs of this diocesan church. I, united with you, thank our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for this opportunity to serve as the Bishop of Greensburg. I would also like to extend a very special thank you to His Excellency, Archbishop Christophe Pierre, the Apostolic Nuncio to the United States and our Holy Father's personal representative to us. My sincere gratitude for your presence, Archbishop, with us today and your presence in our diocese. I ask Archbishop that you please extend to our Holy Father our prayers 
and our pledge of fidelity. And please, in the name of all of the faithful of the Diocese of Greensburg, let me also extend a word of congratulations to you, as recently you have experienced and celebrated 50 years of ordained ministry and 25 years as a bishop. <laughs> you model for us so much. Please extend to our Holy Father the prayers that we offer for him in his apostolic work and also for the privilege of affording me the opportunity to serve in the Diocese of Greensburg. I promise to serve the people entrusted to my care with humility and after the model of Christ, our Good Shepherd. A special word of thanks to Archbishop Nelson Perez, Metropolitan Archbishop and Principal Ordaining Bishop today. Archbishop, your dedication, your energy, your excitement for the gospel is so apparent, and it models to all of us how we are to be bold, lively shepherds in leading our flocks. You honor us as our Metropolitan Archbishop today. We are honored to have you here. We welcome you to return many times. And if I may say, I am privileged to be the first bishop you have ordained. Thank you, Archbishop Perez. You have two very important people next to you. I want to thank you, Bishop Malesic. Thank you for your years of leadership here in the Diocese of Greensburg. Thank you for your mentoring. Thank you for offering me and allowing me many, many wonderful opportunities in parish and diocesan ministry. It is an honor to have you back here in the Diocese of Greensburg, and we welcome you, and we, let you, we want you to know you are welcome anytime here in what I think is one of your many important homes. Thank you. <clears throat> Bishop Brandt, thank you for being here today and also being a co-ordaining bishop. I am deeply indebted also to your leadership of the diocese and to your example of faithfulness and commitment. As I was sitting in the renovated cathedral that now is over 10 years since the renovation, uh, its beauty still shines through. And your dedication and your commitment to the church is deeply appreciated. Thank you also for your years of mentoring and your years of patience and support. And I know my zucchetto is a little lower behind my miter than it should be, but I'm going to work on that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for everything you have done. God bless you. <clears throat> to my brother priests and my brother bishops, and our deacons. I want to thank you, along with all of the wonderful laity in the Diocese of Greensburg. A special word of thanks to the bishops who have traveled in the midst of this weather to be here today. I am deeply, deeply honored with your presence, with your kindness, with your generosity and your support. Thank you so very, very much to our bishops. To my brother priests, those who are here represented today by our vicars and our college consultors, but to all of the priests of the Diocese of Greensburg. The Diocese of Greensburg has extremely hardworking, dedicated clergy and priests and deacons, and they work to serve the people. I am not only honored to work with you, 
I am humbled and honored to be called one of you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for your priestly service and ministry. It does not go unnoticed and it does not go unappreciated. Thank you very much. To all the wonderful laity of the diocese, I send my heartfelt thanks and support. Your consistent, constant faithfulness and generosity has been a source of strength for me, not only for my 28 and a half years of priesthood, but also in my diocesan work. And now I look forward with great expectation and anticipation to our continued working together. A special word of thanks to Archabbot Martin Bartle, who is representing St. Vincent Arch Abbey today, and the monks of St. Vincent Arch Abbey and all of their affiliated institutions. Thank you, Archabbot Martin. I'd like to thank Sister Mary Norbert Long, who is in the congregation today, and she is representing Sister Catherine Minert and the Sisters of Charity of Seton Hill. Thank you, Sister Mary Norbert, for all of your work and leadership. And please convey to all of the Sisters of Charity my prayers, my support, and my best wishes. Thank you, and thank you to the Sisters of Charity and all of our wonderful religious communities in the Diocese of Greensburg. A special word of thanks to Monsignor Raymond Riffle, the rector of Blessed Sacrament Cathedral, and who I have now chosen to be the Vicar General of the Diocese of Greensburg. Monsignor will remain here at the cathedral as the rector. Uh, I don't want to re <laughs> he will still be here. But Monsignor, thank you for what you have done. Thank you for your coordination and leadership. And thank you for all the work that you have done in your previous position as Managing Director for Catholic Charities of the Diocese of Greensburg for 25 years. Thank you. I would like to say a special word of thanks to Ms. Margaret Di Virgilio, our Chancellor, as well as Monsignor William Rathgab, our Judicial Vicar, to Father Michael Sykin at the Office of Worship, to our Masters of Ceremonies, to all of our seminarians who are here today and have been serving and assisting at this Mass under the direction of Father Tyler Bandura, our Episcopal Master of Ceremonies, and I want to thank them for all of their wonderful work. Where are our seminarians? They're probably in the back with all their accoutrements ready to come out, but we have our seminarians come out. Oh. A word of thanks to our pastoral center offices, our managing directors, Ms. Sheila Murray, our chief financial officer, Dr. Maureen Marsteller, Mr. John Stevens, and all of our diocesan directors and staff. We are truly blessed here in the Diocese of Greensburg to have such wonderful and competent diocesan personnel who constantly are about the work of the church and are in service to our parishes. Thank you to all of you who assist in this very important work of the church. And a special word of thanks to our ordination committee members for the tireless work that you have done and the beauty of the liturgies of this ordination and installation for all of the time and all of the detail that I know a little too well behind the scenes. They do not go unnoticed and they do not go unappreciated. And a special word of thanks to you, Tom Octave, our uh, director of music, our, our director today, and Mr. Christopher Pardini, our organist, and all who have helped, our instrumentalists, our vocalists, all who have helped in any way. Thank you very much. Finally, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my family, who is present here today. You know, many people think that this is an important day because it's the ordination and installation of the Bishop of Greensburg. But it's an important day because my mother, my mother was born on the street on Harrison Avenue at home. 
My mother has lived on the street 81 years. My mother today leaves the home for probably close to 12 hours, and I don't know what Harrison Avenue is going to do. And that's a historical moment. But I want to thank my mother, who we don as the queen of Harrison, but I want to thank her and my dear father, my parents, for being here today. It is a privilege not only to have them, I thank them for their love and their support over the years, for all that they have given me, and I recognize how very special and how privileged I am to have both of my parents alive at an Episcopal Lord Nation. So, Mom and Dad, thank you. I thank my twin sisters and my brother, their respective families, for all of your love, your concern, and your encouragement over the years. I just want to remind you what Archbishop Perez said. It is uh, your excellency. <laughs> <clears throat> Bishop, Archbishop, that was the greatest ordination gift. It's, it's going to live long. It's going to be the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> finally, finally, I would love to offer a special word to all of my parishioners, those former parishioners of the parishes that I've served over the years, and in a special way acknowledge the parishioners of my most recent parish, St. James, who have representatives here today from their pastoral and finance councils. Thank you, Karen, and thanks, everybody. The pandemic has limited our ability to gather, but it has not dampened the spirit, the hope, and the joy we celebrate this day. Since receiving this appointment by the Holy Father, I have been reflecting deeply on my vocational discernment. And as I reflected on my vocational discernment to the priesthood, and many of the dimensions related to that, the support of so many, including family, friends, parishioners, fellow priests, I kept coming back to a familiar story. And it's a story that I guess I knew, but when you reflect for a while, you sort of forget about. But it was a story that is so intricately tied to my vocational discernment. I can never think of a time that I remember not being in church. Church was a part of our experience. And I was always drawn to the ministry of altar serving. And I can remember being a very young child, and I went up to our Slovak pastor who was an immigrant, and I said to him, I said, Father, I'd like to serve. I'd like to be an altar boy. And he said to me, in only that beautiful, soft pastoral way, you have to receive First Holy Communion first. <laughs> and so I was obedient. And I reflected that I came home from school and the last Saturday of May of 1974, we received our First Holy Communion. And I walked home from school and I walked over to the parish rectory. And I knocked at the door of the rectory and the pastor's housekeeper came in to the door and said, may I help you? He said, I want to see Father. She said, okay. So Father came to the door and I said, I want to serve. And you told me that I had to first receive Holy Communion, then I could serve at the altar. He sort of realized what he had said, and he said, all right. And as he said that, he said, just come to Mass for the next couple of weeks, the early morning Mass, every day. I'll teach you what you need to know. I tell the story that later my mother and he had talked, and they both thought I was a little too young, but they figured after a day or two I wouldn't get up early in the morning, and that would be a good out for everybody, and that uh, I wouldn't persevere. But I did persevere in altar serving, and I loved being an altar server. And serving at the altar not only brought me great joy, but it fostered a wonderful prayer and devotional life. It placed me in many opportunities to see the important spiritual needs of people and the solace that they received in and through the church and her sacraments. It taught me discipline and respect. And most importantly, it taught me that discipline was intrinsically tied to service. 
that it takes family, church, and community working well together to respond to God's invitation to serve. I come before you today knocking at the door. This time not a side door of a rectory on 3rd Street in Leechburg, a small southwestern Pennsylvania steel town, but I come knocking at your door. I'm not asking a wise and seasoned immigrant priest or maybe even more so a devoted housekeeper who served as a gatekeeper to the pastor to serve, but I'm asking you, in the name of the church, in the name of Christ, to serve. I come today not as that same naive, wide-eyed second grader, but now as a priest and a bishop. I come to your door, knocking. I'm asking you, can I serve? I'll do my best to learn. I will commit the time it takes. And believe it or not, I'll even get up early as often as I have to. Just give me a chance. I promise I will do my best. But I need something even more than that. Something even more than your permission. I need God's grace. And I need your help your cooperation, and your desire. Will you join me? God has done great things. Can we only imagine if with his grace, a small young boy who wanted to just be an altar boy was called and sustained to the priesthood and now to the episcopacy. Can we only imagine what God can do for each one of us if we trust, if we rely on his grace and follow his will. Come, let us find out together what God has planned for each of us. Christus es veritas, Christ is the truth. Let us seek the truth, know the truth, and love the truth. Pochvolen pan Jesus Christus, na veki, amen. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. O God, who care for your people with gentleness and rule them in love, endow with them the spirit of wisdom and give to those whom you have handed on authority to govern that from the flourishing of a holy flock may come eternal joy for its shepherds. Amen. As in your majestic power you allotted the number of our days, and the measure of our years. Look favorably upon our humble service and confer on our time the abundance of your grace. Amen. Amen. Give a happy outcome to the task that through your grace you have laid upon me, whom you have raised to the rank of bishop. Make me pleasing to you in the fulfillment of my duties and so guide the hearts of people and pastor that the obedience of the flock may never fail the shepherd, nor the care of the shepherd be lacking for the flock. 
Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Christus vincit, Christus regnat, Christus imperat, imperat.